Hi, I'm Polly Pete Harrison with the Fintech Times and I'm here at day three of Money 2020. Would you like to introduce yourself for us, please? Hi, no, I'm Daniel Belder. I'm the Head of Product Strategy at OpenPaid. Uh, been there now for a good six months, looking at how we can you know, take our current propositions and our current infrastructure services and you know, take them beyond what we have and power it for the next, I don't know, three years if we can. <laughs> Amazing. So, I mean, let's just get right down to it. What has fueled the rise of all-in-one banking services? Now, if, let's say if I look at how what people are now calling like the all-in-one banking services is ultimately customers are now getting to a point that they want to offer customer experiences that just can't be made possible with the existing legacy infrastructures. And they're looking for how can we make this happen by either going to infrastructure providers like ourselves or trying to make multiple connections of 15 different parties to try and make it work. So the all-in-one really comes out of that complexity where nobody's being able to make it work the way they want it because there's too many components in the, in the process. And that's where, let's say, embedded finance is really starting to take off because it creates that abstraction layer and gives that c capability to well, some financial services companies, but as well as non-financial services companies to offer that innovative customer experience. So that to me is really what's powering this growth in the all-in-one banking. Yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned embedded finance because I do feel like some of the conversations that I've had during this event have been very much focused on embedded finance, what it means, what it is. In your opinion, do you think 2022 is going to be the year of embedded finance and, and what do you think is going to happen with it? Uh, I, well, I'd say 2022 already is the year of embedded finance. It's, it's already happening. Uh, 2023 to me is where it will really take off because now the is, let's say this year, everybody is getting to the level where the technology has now reached the maturity level to allow for the different use cases and the services people are looking for. And people are starting to understand how to leverage those and make use of those systems and that infrastructure. So is this year already the year of embedded finance? Yes. Will we see the benefits really materialize this year? Probably towards the end of the year, but next year for sure. But what are the barriers that embedded finance needs to overcome? Uh, the fact that nobody really knows what embedded finance means <laughs> is one big barrier. Everybody has slightly different let's say viewpoint of what it means whether it's like is it a reg tech reg tech is it insured tech is it a fintech it's like everybody has a different connotation for embedded finance in my point of view that is probably one of the biggest hurdles to overcome and honestly one of the relatively easier ones to overcome because it's just a question of starting talking not about i want the a solution that does embedded finance but is i want a solution that solves this use case for me or this problem for me. And as soon as the conversations move to that, that hurdle is kind of easily overcome. And what you end up seeing is what most people are looking for is just that infrastructure layer that can give technology in a flexible manner combined with a regulatory know-how and capabilities to allow them to do what they need to do. And every customer is kind of looking for something slightly different based on the customer experience they're trying to provide. So getting that finer detail of understanding and knowledge is probably going to be the next step that everybody needs to take. Amazing. And so what about you know, the regional differences? Uh, does that come into play when we think about embedded finance? Of course. No, that for sure. Let's say every region, every country does have slight variations. Let's say here in Europe, we are a bit spoiled where with the European Union and the PSD2, like there is a bit of a harmonization across the markets. But even within Europe itself, if you go for a German market or a French market, there's still slight variations of what you have to do, what you don't have to do with the consumers, etc. And then if you go further afield into, let's say, UK or US or even further afield into Latin America, Asia, the regulatory environments are so dis to some degree so different that understanding the capabilities and what and how 
the, the, the different systems can work together, that is very, very complex, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's also where I see, let's say, the big opportunity of embedded finance, mm -hmm. which is exactly to solve that complexity, make that abstraction layer, to offer the infrastructure so a customer can offer the same experience, have the same, let's say, proposition in the US with a US consumer as they do in Europe with a European consumer or a Brazilian consumer in Brazil. So that it becomes a more borderless experience, but still fully compliant, still fully regulated, but in a simple technological wrapper. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess moving away from embedded finance slightly then, yeah. I know another one of the sort of the major hot topics at the moment is the talent shortages and the great resignation. And I feel like we're probably a bit sick of talking about this by now, but I'd love to get your take on it. What can be done to sort of tackle the shortages within the industry, in your opinion, if, if anything at all? Uh, there's a, let's say what comes to my mind is two key things. One is there is a shortage of knowledge. Mm. So that means people do have to partner and leverage as much as possible those companies that do have knowledge. So um, I can't bring it back to embedded finance. Yeah. Uh, because you say having that understanding of the market is, let's say, a very niche product now. Not many people have that capability. So the infrastructure providers are, in essence, perfect partners for that because they can help alleviate the issue of shortage of knowledge. Ultimately, it's also about what kind of company you have and the benefits and the packages. And are you a remote company now? Or are you a, a hybrid company with some office, no office? It, it is, let's say, the world has changed quite a bit. You know, like I, I agree, we, we all talk a lot about how to do things. I still personally love meeting people in real life. Uh, it gives me energy. Some people, I, it's like I myself are interviewing, they're asking for fully remote. Mm -hmm. So I'd say the flexibility you can provide will help a lot. Being able to work with people that have the knowledge to compensate will help a lot. So it just means we all have to really start con talking more with each other rather than just have you know, Zoom calls. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, especially coming to places like this and yeah. finally meeting people face to face. I think having that connection in person is just so important, isn't it? It is. Now, uh, I think I've learned more and done and had more in-depth conversations over the last two days over a coffee or a beer or just a water than in the last six months over Zoom calls because nothing really replaces that, let's say, this level of interaction that you can get with people. It really makes such a massive difference, doesn't it? It does. And I think, speaking then of Money 2020, I know that you have announced a partnership uh, while you've been here. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Uh, yes. Now, while here, we announced our partnership with Yapoli, uh, which is a reciprocal partnership where, in essence, we're, we're going to be using their services to help power our open banking capabilities. And vice versa, they'll be leveraging some of our embedded finance capabilities to help power the customer experiences they're looking to do. So going back to also the point of shortages, you, you really see the, how well different parties can cooperate and work together, which typically you would have not seen that much in, what, three years ago. So it, it is quite an interesting partnership, quite an interesting way to see the, the market. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's been great to chat. And I yeah, hope you enjoy you. the rest of your time here. Thank you. You too.